A widespread survey warns that outbreaks of heroin use now go beyond the big cities to regions where it's not been seen before. Stratford-upon-Avon at the heart of Middle England, famous for Shakespeare, American tourists and now heroin. A new epidemic is attacking the most unlikely parts of Britain and its victims are teenagers. Some, like this woman's daughter, are as young as 14 and are suffering the effects of addiction. Very, very glazed eyes, unwilling to talk. Wanted just to go upstairs to her bedroom, she had to suffer away. She was constantly sick. Um, very, very aggressive. Cheap and easily available heroin is being pushed by a sophisticated network of dealers. Although most of the young people taking it are from poor areas, there are clear signs that teenagers from affluent backgrounds are being targeted, and they're ignorant of its dangers. They're usually offered brown, which is a street name for heroin, but they haven't been educated at school as to what brown is, and they just think it's another form of cannabis and a lot of them are smoking cigarettes, so they smoke the heroin, but they don't realize that they're into an addictive drug. Nine years ago, the largest concentration of heroin users was in Greater London, Norfolk, and the northwest of England, with some other areas also reporting a higher than average number of addicts. Today, new outbreaks of heroin use among the under-19s are being reported all over England and Wales. Small cities and towns in rural regions with no history of a heroin problem are being affected, rather than the metropolitan areas. In Stratford, the police have begun disrupting the dealers' networks. They've arrested more than 40 people who've been selling heroin for as little as five pounds a rat. We've had occasionally had instances of, of youngsters being targeted uh, and sometimes being sort of given the first fix free, which was even more worrying. Um, and with heroin, it's particularly addictive. Uh, uh, young, young people can get hooked very quickly, so we've decided enough's enough. The report says as well as enforcement, there should be a public education programme to give heroin a bad name. The coordinator of the government's fight against drugs says getting children young is a priority. We've got to get in there. We've got to stop it, not just through enforcement, but actually through education. Because I think many of the young teenagers uh, and young people growing up now are not aware of the disastrous consequences of heroin. The news from Middle England is worrying. Convincing teenagers that their drug of choice isn't just another drug is a challenge. But this is one anti-drugs message that has to work if this new epidemic is to be stopped in its tracks. Jane Peel, BBC News. A controversial march by loyalist apprentice boys will go ahead in Londonderry on Saturday. Out about it until court proceedings in France are finished. Still bearing the scars of the horrific injuries he sustained in the accident, Trevor Rees Jones agreed to make a short statement at his solicitor's office in Shropshire. He stressed that he had not been paid for this or an earlier newspaper interview and his first thoughts were with those most closely involved in the tragedy. This is the first time I've spoken publicly since the accident that happened at the end of August last year, and I would first like to extend my sympathy to the family and friends of those who were tragically killed in the accident. I have cooperated fully with the judge who is investigating the accident, and I have told them all I turn up to this present time. I may wish to ask to see the judge again in the future, but I have no intention of doing this at the moment. In the months since the accident, Mr. Rhys Jones has faced intense media interest. His appearances at the Paris Inquiry drew international attention. Now he is appealing for privacy as the first anniversary of the princess's death approaches. I'd like everyone to appreciate this August will be a very difficult time for myself, my family, and for all the families that have been involved in this tragic accident. I'd like everyone and the press to appreciate that and respect our privacy and let us mark this tragic anniversary in our own way. However sketchy his memory of the crash itself, it's likely that his story of the princess's last days could make him a millionaire. But he says he has no plans to reveal any more at the moment. I'd also like to add that I've got no intentions of speaking further on the subject publicly until after the court proceedings are finished, if at all. He's asked his lawyer to deal with the press while he tries to rebuild his life. Having quit his job at Harrods, he now works as a part-time sales assistant in a sports shop a world away from his existence a year ago, which so nearly cost him his life. Jenny Bond, BBC News. 
Talks between the United Nations and Iraq are on the verge of collapse, according